Hello, my name is Kevin Day. This presentation is part of my Cyber Operations Capstone project titled Detection and Analysis of Android Banking Malware. This video presentation has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. For my summer courses in my Cyber Operations program, I will be taking Vulnerability and Discovery and Exploitation and Securing Wireless and Mobile Technologies. In the late 1980s, online banking was starting to be introduced using certain devices to access banking accounts using telephone connections. Today, online banking extends to any electronic payment system that allows customers of a bank to conduct financial transactions by using banking websites or a mobile application. Users in the age group of 18 to 32 are one of the major driving factors behind this rapid increase in the number of mobile banking options. Traditional banks are starting to shift to mobile applications based banking for various banking related tasks. Some even offer financial incentives for switching to paperless banking to use the internet to digitally transfer money. The problem statement. Mobile banking applications are one of the primary channels used for accessing bank and accounting services. This is one of the driving forces for the need for development of robust and accurate detection of Android Trojan mobile malware applications for banking and the mobile industry. Mobile banking malware is a growing security threat that poses a major, major risk to both consumers and the banking industry due to the unique nature of mobile malware. This type of targeted malware can be leveraged to gain access to confidential information and personal funds. Mitigation of Trojan malware on the Android platform can result in a more secure environment protecting personal identifiable information and many other applications. The collection and storage of personal identifiable information in a centralized location results in developers creating malware that target mobile banking applications. Detection of banking malware remains a challenging undertaking due to the constant evolution of methods used to evade detection techniques and security solutions. The number of incidents of this malware type which targets mobile app banking applications will only continue in the future. The purpose of the study is to research and develop a robust and accurate method of detection of mobile Trojan malware for the Android platform. Development of a more accurate detection method of mobile Trojan malware will aid the banking and mobile industry and increase the mitigation of this type of malware. These efforts will result in a more secure environment while protection, protecting P II in many other applications. The research, the project research areas are what is the behavior impacted of mobile banking Trojan malware on the device, the rate and differentiating the vectors of infection, and what is the overall effect on the host device. Assumptions and limitations for this project will mobile Trojan banking for the Android operating system will be still prevalent. This project will focus exclusively on the Android platform and iOS or any mobile platform will not be included for this project. Who is at risk? Individuals who own mobile devices and use banking applications or purchase using an application store and app purchases such as the Google Play Store are at risk to mobile malware. Attackers will commonly exploit social engineering techniques to entice users to visit hostile websites and to install malicious applications. 
These techniques could be spamming, phishing, false advertisements, drive-by downloads, attachment, and games. Some background on the Android app operating system is this is a mobile operating system and it uses a modified version of the Linux kernel and other open source software. This is free and open source. It's under the Android open source project and primarily license, licensed under the Apache license. Under Google development, Android evolved to use a Linux kernel. The Android security model relies on the least privilege principle, which each installed app is provided the minimum capabilities to guarantee its functionalities, whereas the access to individual sensitive resources is limited by the grant of specific permissions. After the required permissions have been granted, the malware performs actions that hide its existence on the device. The user is completely unaware of the malware infection and the malware continues to deploy anti-detection me measures. Once installed, the malware can hide from both user and antivirus protection, achieve persistence on the targeted device for operating seamlessly. The Google Play Store discourages users to install apps to prevent any third-party market place apps due to security concerns. However, installation from other third-party markets are permitted on the device, and some third-party apps are available through the official Google Play Store. The Play Store does not verify the uploaded apps manually. It checks the third-party developer apps with a program called Bouncer. Bouncer is a dynamic analysis sandbox environment to prevent any malware from entering the Play Store. The Google Play Store is capable of remote uninstall apps it finds that are, have malicious behavior if the device is connected to the internet. Rooting is a commonly seen to extend the capabilities of an Android device and has subsequent security implications because it overcomes the Android basic security principles. Rooting a device grants the user super user rights allow unrestricted access to everything on the device. If a rooted device is more at risk for malware infection since criminals do not have to take the time and effort to gain administrative rights on the device. Enhancements at the operating system must be made to prevent and detect malware infection. Increasing the built-in capabilities ensure compliance and that end users are not required to install or manage third-party applications or, cert or certifications. Once a user has installed a piece of hardware on an Android, the OS is responsible providing the following basic security protections. Isolation between processes, restricting access to a file on the file system, and limit OS support for app overlay attacks. The Linux kernel is an extremely important part of the software on every Android device. While the Linux kernel contains the code for all of the different chip architectures and hardware device it supports, it is an individual system that runs a fraction of the code base. Banking Trojans Mobile malware is a subsequent subset of malicious software that targets mobile devices with the intent to access, steal, or corrupt private data. Trojan malware is any type of malicious program disguised as a legitimate one designed to steal sensitive information such as login credentials, account information, financial information, and credit card information. Some recent timelines of mobile uh, banking malware is <coughs> Android BankBot 65 was discovered in Russia. The attack reached 100,000 users and the state-owned company reported more than $35 million 
in United States dollar and losses. In 2016, BankPot source code was released and showed similarities to the malware to two different malware samples. Trojans of the BankBot variety, called BankBots, re represented the most prominent threat in the Android ecosystem, stealing credentials by accessing other applications' private data or by displaying a fraudulent login page on top of a legitimate banking applications. In 2018, Cerberus Banking Trojan was released in the wild. This Trojan was designed exclusively for the Android operating system. The source cord was publicly released in the same year. In 2020, Android Banking Trojan is a fork of the initial variant of Cerberus released around the same time as Cerberus. There is a new uh, banking malware called that is part of the family of banking trojans that target mobile application users in Brazil capable of spying on 153 mobile applications and can be accessed remotely by its operators. Mobile banking trojans are developed with the fi final goal to compromise mobile banking credentials. Once compromised, Criminals have the total access to account features, including transfer and billing payments, allowing transfer and theft of funds. This type of mobile malware can impersonate mobile apps and steal money from the mobile user's bank account. Disguised as, le as a legitimate application, they lure users into installing applications on their mobile device. Banking Trojans are written with the specific purpose of stealing confidential information from a victim's bank account through online payment systems. Some mobile Trojan detection evasion methods include dormant capabilities, hiding components in other files, forming part of a rope kit, and heavy obfuscation. Modus operandi. Malware creators are very creative and new variants of existing malware emerge on the internet every month. Devices are constantly being infected with malware which attackers have developed that specifically target mobile banking applications. There are three main phases of a mobile banking attack, infection, persistence, and the attack phase. The infection phase is the malware first infects a user's device using the most common vector to infect a device, which includes malicious web pages or application stores. An attacker can gain access to the mobile device using social engineering to gain a user's to open and click links in a short message service or email. Social engineering relies on human interaction to trick users into breaking security procedures in order to gain information that is typically protected. This could be done as linked to a website that creates an offer to a prize if the user completes a small questionnaire. The questionnaire provides users personal information to the attacker. If a mobile link redirects a user to a malicious or hostile website, some JavaScript code can be leveraged to download malware on the device. Once downloaded, an application can trick users for unattended, unintentional permission granting by, by bypassing the security model. The persistence phase. Once installed, modern Trojans try to hide from both users and antivirus protection and achieve persistence on the target device. Persistence techniques ensure seamless operation on the device using anti-analysis techniques to achieve command and control on a given device, such as hiding the application icon from the list of installed apps. Once the mobile malware obtains administrative privileges, it may try to install the banker as a system app. Removing it becomes more difficult and requiring administrative principle, uh, privileges. Anti-analysis techniques are often used within mobile malware to show a unsuspected behavior until a specific condition is trigger is launched. 
This mainly is used to avoid detection doing antivirus analysis by limiting the malware to a few minutes of runtime monitoring. An attacker can control their Trojan using a command and control server where this complex infrastructure is implemented by using a centralized entity to receive instructions from an infected device. The attack phase. This is when a user's private bank account information is stolen and illicit payments transactions are carried out using an overlay attack or SNM spoofing. Trojan banking malware can achieve their malicious behavior many in different ways in which depends on the leverage of access rights. If the highest privileges have been granted, the malware could subvert the Android security model and steal data from the other installed applications. This data includes but is not limited to login passwords and bank account details. An overlay attack. As soon as a victim clicks on a link as a legitimate site or launches a legitimate application, the malware can monitor which applications are being installed on the infected device. This can replicate high quality user interfaces and present a fraudulent screen on top of a target application. If sensitive applications are detected, the malware presents a similar login screen on top of a legitimate one. The user is not able to distinguish the fraudulent version from the original and will insert their credentials, which are uploaded to a command and control server. There are two other common attack types for this type of malware, which would be tampered web traffic, where attackers can maliciously tamper on the web traffic and dynamically alter a web page's content and redirect users to fraudulent websites, and also SNM spoofing. With the adaption of two-factor authentication, which a one-time password is generated, attackers have deployed features to steal one-time passwords by hijacking SM messages. Attackers can exploit two-factor authentication that employs a time-based one-time password and HMAC Mac-based one-time password. Incept intercepting text messages by bypassing SNM-based two-factor authentication and sends SNM messages to allow for the activities of paid services. Users need to be careful with applications that, that request access to SNM. Malware Athena Analysis Methods Malware can be analyzed using two different common methods, static and dynamic. Static analysis processes the analytics analysis of the code or structure of a sample to determine its functionality. The sample itself is not run, and primarily conclusions about the sample cannot be determined just on static analysis alone. This can be done by just fingerprinting the malware. Dynamic analysis is when the, sys the sample is run within the device or a similar environment. With dynamic analysis, the sample can be responded to when it receives data or is executed within an environment. This could be process monitoring by monitoring the process generated by the sample or a network where monitoring the network traffic is generated by the sample. Detection methods. On-device on -device detection deployment could use signature-based malware is simple and effective for device security analysis and detection. Implementing more detailed assessment and analysis is constrained by device hardware resources. The limitation of on-device service deployment is it cannot directly scan other application memory files, read and write, and private files during application scanning. Android permits ex execution of background application services and stops anti-malware application services if it runs out of hardware resources. And finally, privileged applications can force stop anti-malware execution with the correct privileges. Without root privilege, an anti-malware service cannot create system hooks to monitor the file systems and uninstall malicious applications. 
off-device detection deployment could use cloud analysis, but it is important to automate the deep static analysis of a new malware sample to enable the human analysis to take quick, decisive action to identify and stop the malware. Automatic deep analysis needs significant computational power and memory to achieve this analysis. Now there is a hybrid detection deployment where this approach is an on and off device method for, de for detailing and computationally expensive analysis. The data is analyzed and performed at a remote server to make the anti-malware application limited resource friendly. This can use profile and normally detection requires continuous availability of internet bandwidth the function it uses a client server model where the client collects resources uses its parameters and sends it to the server and the server per performs detailed analysis and returns it to the client some awareness for security solutions when dealing with mobile banking malware could be in today's world where technology is necessary for business to grow and expand it is vital to know how to protect sensitive company information. One of the most common places for hackers to use exploit is the end user. The end user is, is essentially the employees of a company or a user that already has access to the company's sensitive information or network. Organizations need to deploy more frequent online offline awareness programs to educate mobile banking users and bank employees about the various potential threats and best practices. It's also notable to enable SNM notifications for monitoring mobile banking activity. Malicious email attachments. Mobile bank users should be aware not to click, download, or open suspicious emails. Users should, al should always be aware and take preventative measures before you download the files, only downloading files from a reputable source and site. Popular email applications such as Outlook offer users the option to mark or report an email as suspicious or phishing. If a unsolicited email or link appears, do not click or open it. Understand that even messages from a trusted friend or associate could be affected. If a email or file attachment seems out of the question, do not open it. Software updates. Only download applications from official stores such as the Google Play Store. Users can archive, achieve, ensuring the latest version of the operating system and web browser is installed and checks for new antivirus definitions regularly. Protection. Installing a mobile antivirus solution for Android operating systems such, such as Kaspersky Mobile Antivirus. Mo most Antivirus software will ask if you want to scan files for malicious intent before downloading the file. As an extra step, device users can run an antivirus scan after downloading a file to ensure that nothing malicious has slipped through the cracks. Developers should implement a strong authentication scheme so device remains secure even when the subject to a mobile or smart card attacks. These are the references for I use for this presentation. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this.